Is everyone recording? Please say something. Yes. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, yeah, hello. Nathan's coming in super hot. Nathan's always, coming in I'm always unnecessarily. Super hot. <laughs> Nathan's wavelength is a solid block. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look that way on mine. And I turned my my gain down. All right, yours looks no, good. Your gain, though. your gain is fine. It's just when you get all up. When you got nasty, really like, close get up to in the mic. Your face like that. Too close. Your mic is yeah. too powerful to be that close. Mine is good. <laughs> Mine's not powerful enough. I can be right here. You're listening to the John Chi Show, hosted by three Korean American adoptees, diving headfirst into what it means to be adopted Korean American and more. And now here's your hosts, Nathan, Patrick, and KJ. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the John G. Show. It's your boys, KJ, Nathan, and Patrick here with another Woo! fantastic episode. Uh, I am in control of the soundboard. We'll see you if it comes cheered, through. You cheered yourself. It did not come through? One. Yeah, it did. I heard, I heard. Oh, okay. That's the, the downside is I don't hear when it comes through. <laughs> and you can't talk during it. <laughs> and I can't say any. I mean, I could say stuff. It would That's just true. Be, be normal. So... But yeah, uh, how are you doing, guys? I am doing great. I woke up and felt like today was going to be a great day, and it was all right. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. not, I won't lie. I will, I'll be honest. And it was it all right. Was, but it was B minus. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> but uh, no, for the most part, pretty pretty swell. How are you doing, Nathan? You were just telling us about um, swell your day, <laughs> my day. My day has been gloomy. Night, it's, like, rather. it's been it's been a gloomy day. It's rained and then it was sunny for a little bit. And then uh yeah, we're just coming up on the end of the year. So there's a lot of uh stuff happening for schools and uh, end of the school year. Yeah. Mm, I was like, what? I was and like, then, let was me like, check uh, my watch. Is yeah, it December? Not that year. And like, I missed it. End of the school it. year. <laughs> and yeah, and of course we're taking our trip, uh our our spring break makeup trip soon. Um but yeah, other than that, uh, and yes, I'm tired as well, which, you know, this is again self inflicted. I stayed up too late. So, oh, and I did start playing Zelda, but that's a whole nother issue that does, really has nothing to do with the show. So, are you enjoying <laughs> or does it? Does it have everything to do with the show? <laughs> that's a fun game. I don't know. <laughs> are you, you are having a good time? Yeah. I don't I like have my it. Switch, so I can't play it. It's, it's, I didn't it's, even know yeah. a new Zelda game was coming out, to be honest. Ooh, okay. Well, I only I'm knew because of some fair. racist news. So, racist news? Is that what you just said? Yeah. Gross. Yeah, someone, some like video game reviewer, just dragged Nintendo through the mud. And what was he? What were they upset about? I don't know. Nintendo. N- Nintendo. 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 <laughs> yeah, the Nintendo Mountain Dew spinoff that has been <laughs> created in partnership with the that. launch of <laughs> Zelda. Yeah. Huh. Featuring Taco Bell. Is it because they've done something with fictional Bro, characters? I don't know. <laughs> I honestly I have no idea. And that's what makes the real world happen is what yeah, happens in fantasy like, How land. dare you f up my fictional character? <laughs> oh, Stupid people. so uh, much well, fun. Well, on that fun note, uh, John Chi means to feast and to celebrate, <laughs> and we are doing neither of those things yet, but we will soon be doing them. Uh, specifically, John Chi means to feast, but you can't have a feast without really also celebrating. So we're doing doing all of it. We're here to explore intersectional identities. Uh, here to explore Zelda, the video game. Here to explore, <laughs> uh, I mean, kind of anything and everything. This is a fun solo episode. Uh, we often have guests on. If you go back into the feed, I guess I'm just saying hello to all the new listeners and thanks for listening to all our, our old listeners. Thanks for continuing to listen <laughs> yeah i like that i appreciate those people yeah yeah thank you thank you people thank you yeah great great episode all right nathan Good said we, right. nathan uh, said we uh, need a short one okay see you everybody <laughs> nathan said we need a short episode <laughs> kj can't hear this I can't okay. stop it. I was you like, can't oh, I can't stop. You can't stop. I can't so stop. Hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I have something we can talk about uh, that might lead into a question. So I also have things to talk about. As of the week of this recording, um, the Monday of this week, I got invited to do a like moderate a panel 
for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month with the Indianapolis Colts, which was really cool. Whoa. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, super cool. Um, and I thought it went really well. Uh, all the feedback that I've been getting has been really good. But I got a message on LinkedIn yesterday or two days ago, actually, from somebody who is also an adopted Asian American uh, who was in the audience for the talk. And I'm just going to briefly read some of the comments that they shared. Uh, said, I related to everything you said and talked about eye-opening to hear uh, that the things I struggled with as a young person can, can, and continue to struggle with are things that many other Asian Americans struggle with as well. Um, I know many of my coworkers came up to me after the conversation to talk about it and how it opened their eyes to things that we struggle with and how they appreciate me for who I am. I've never felt more included in something than I did in that conversation yesterday. Wow. And I was like, nice. damn, dude. I was like, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, the wild thing is, is like I was, I did share, end up sharing a little bit of my story, uh, a little bit more than I thought I was, but I was there to simply lead the conversation and share the stories of two people who work in the organization and share their stories specifically. And so the fact that somebody still felt seen and included in that way, um, based on the stuff that I shared, I thought was really awesome and incredible and just a good reminder and affirmation as to why not only do I do this work, but do the show in particular and just felt very affirming. So I was going to ask you two if you've, I don't know, where do you find like the affirmations? Where do you see those like little things that you celebrate about the show that come up? What like keeps whether you it be doing? messages, you know, like where does that come up for you? Because I feel like we don't talk about it a lot, honestly. Like sometimes we'll get it. We don't even know if we talk about when we get reviews or anything. And I feel like this particular year, this particular APAM wanting to celebrate joy more and talk about mm -hmm. the things that are great a little bit and focus on some of that. And so wondering for both of you, kind of where you found some of that in the show, tangentially, off to the sides, things that we may not know about. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a good question. And I think it's, it's funny that you're like, no, I want to celebrate joy because I'm like, not at all in that headspace. So it's a good practice for me to actually think about like, you know what, a bunch of really rough stuff has happened in my community and I'm going to choose joy in this moment. Um, well, I mean, we could still talk about the rough stuff too. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And if no. you're not in wanting to go to that headspace, you totally don't have to. No, you know? I, I think it's, I think it's good because, um, it's, so it's kind of related. Uh, it was funny. So, uh, earlier this week or last week when this episode drops, um, I went to a vigil for, uh, those uh, who were affected by the shooting in the Allen Outlet Mall. And um, I was there, uh, I mean, to participate, but honestly, it was mostly the work of Stephanie Dranka and her team uh, over at Dallas Asian Historical Society that highlighted uh, just like the racism of it and the white supremacy of it. And like, it's not just like a, I don't know, <laughs> it's, I can't believe we're at a place where you can say like, it's not just another mass shooting, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and certainly they all have their flavors and things, but like, I don't know, it was just so close to home and it, it just like really affected me and, and reading that uh, and reading her, her words and, and then the press afterwards, like just made it a whole thing. So as of recording this, I haven't really had time to reflect on it. And what I can tell you is um, a, it was really interesting and fun being introduced as a podcaster and a board member, which are two hey. two titles that I never <laughs> have ever attributed with myself. So I was like, I had imposter syndrome for these like cool things. And I was like, well, this was fun. But I was also like, what? So <laughs> that was, I don't know, but it was just cool because like I am those things. And uh, yeah, so it was just fun to to be in that space and um, and to think about that. It was also in the midst of tragedy and heartbreak. It was also, I think, really encouraging. One of the speakers towards the end of the night um, said something about like, this isn't the Texas that my family and I moved here for. This isn't mm -hmm. like how we want, how my parents imagined our lives to be when they moved us here, those kinds of things. But like, and while it was tragic, it also reminded me that like, I could love the state that I'm in, but like I used, not exactly like I used to, but like I used to, even while being really heartbroken, being really angry, being really like, sad and annoyed and, and all those kinds of things. And so, um, yeah, it was just, it was good to 
be reminded of those things and and fun to hang out in that space and to be in a diverse group of people moving towards a common like desire, gun reform and et cetera. Um, so yeah, I, I think that was something worth celebrating. And it, it reminded me that like none of that would have been possible without the past three years, without the John Chi show and, and other mm. things in my life. Um, and just like relating to people. I think like the, the show, one of the tangentially has like helped me talk to people good. <laughs> um, so I think that that's been helpful too. Um, so yeah, those are the, some joyful moments in the midst of hard ones. Well, I appreciate you share that. And one can totally relate to the label of podcaster still feeling really mm-hmm. weird to wear. Cause I was introducing myself as that in New York and Vegas at these like larger things. Yeah. And I'm like, I'd say, yeah, I'm a podcaster. And it like, at first I'm like, that sounds so weird. And like, I don't probably have a job. It sounds so <laughs> annoying. They sound annoying. Yeah. I'm yeah. Kind of like, like pretentious, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to tell them what I podcast about. And it became more about the, the topic uh, yeah. less so about the medium um and two i think especially out of the midst of like tragedy especially and especially in your local area um i think i agree the encouraging thing is seeing the community kind of come together and i really what i really love about what stephanie's doing is what i want to see happen in indiana is uncovering that local history of the asian american community to provide more context to just uh oh this is a one off thing that happens here no it's fueled by something well by racism specifically but <laughs> it's not that it's just occurring now or it just happened in the last 3 years um but to see people like rally around that point and be willing to come together and be like yes, we see this and we acknowledge this history and we're going to stand up in support of the community or in support of us because of it. And I feel like that is, you, there There should be joy derived from seeing the community come together like that. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Um, what about you, Nathan? Where are you finding joy at right now? Probably getting ready for con. So I feel <laughs> yes. like you got to be getting joy out of that, right? <laughs> I, I am. I am. I'm very fortunate to be helping out with uh, con and be on their advisory council and their engagement committee and seeing all the different um, sides of it, the, the back behind the scenes, you know, the, the BTS of it. Exactly. So I really have been um, grateful for everything that they are doing and uh, all the members that help out the volunteers. I mean, we're all doing it for free. It's, it's our time and efforts. And then to see how many people sign up and enjoy going to these events. Um, I mean, even though this is going to be my only second in-person one, I, I feel, I can already feel the excitement and I can feel um, you know, the good that they're doing. And so I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that and something again, that I didn't ever expect to be a part of like that uh, as, as involved, you know, three years ago when we started this. So, um, and then as far as the podcast goes, being involved in the podcast has been um, pretty amazing. And more recently, I get the joy out of it when I get to explain it to somebody who I haven't seen in a really long time. Um, mm. because they always assume I'm still like doing photography or, um, you know, sure. uh, you know, well, you know how, what are you doing, you know, in your time and, and this, this and that. And so I get to explain, oh, well, I've been doing a podcast for three years. So, you know, we just passed our 130th episode, you know, and it's when I, when I start spitting off details of our accomplishments, you know, we've won an award, um, you know, from CAFLA, we've, uh, had so many emails from people listening on, on how we've helped them and what we've done that those, all those things like that have made, you know, getting the actual reinforcement, um, from people and then seeing people show up to our live shows. Um, those are the things that bring me joy because, you know, I've always done this, um, at the beginning, we all, you know, decided that we wanted to do this, even if we could just help one person or two people or whatever. Right. right? Uh, but actually to hear it from people and say, you know, these, the kind words that, that the emails and some of the messages we've gotten, um, has really, you know, made it worth it and made me feel joy. Um, and I've always, I've always, that's what I wanted to do. That's over, you know, as far as my, not my life's purpose, but I feel like I'm a service person. I, I like to give back to the community. I like to give. And you know, even as a wedding photographer, I was capturing events that I knew would be, you know, cherished, 
forever right. exactly hopefully. you know up on the wall hopefully hopefully <laughs> <laughs> exactly. oh yeah that's, that's true and mm-hmm. hopefully we'll i didn't see. mess up right um but that yeah that that feeling of you know providing a service or just you know a uh, worth uh you know what's what's the word um being you know a part of the the community and and that's just been you know great for me that's that's what brings me joy so yeah i agree uh and that's something i wanted to say as well before before i started talking about my thing and i was like i feel like i'm talking too long but uh <laughs> no, yeah never. I, I think it's i think it's massive when when you see that interaction when you get those emails uh like early when we first started like seeing the reviews on like apple podcast was cool because it like a i think it validated me <laughs> like my own right imposter syndrome was like i'm doing a podcast like is anybody yeah. even listening and, you know like those kinds of things and be like yeah. Are we a, is this real um and yeah so i think that's that's huge i love seeing people apply uh and just being able to read some of the, the things on the form i think that that's really encouraging but one of the things that i just recently kind of rediscovered because we had had a minute where we hadn't had guests and then we started having guests again um just for scheduling reasons but uh, seeing people tell their stories and then seeing all of their friends be like, I'm so excited to listen. Like oh, that yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing I think is, is really wonderful. Uh, yeah. not just because like it helps us like just f- through the sheer promotion of it, but because like when we started out, yes, we wanted to help one person. But I think for me, like my goal is always like, if we can help one person find their voice, if we can help amplify people's voices and Mm -hmm. seeing that happen and seeing people be like, I'm so excited to listen to this or like, way to go. Your story is so fantastic. And then seeing other randos connect with this rando who connected with us randos, like that's like, that's a cool constellation. So I, I'm always considered such an honor and a privilege for when people comments on things and, and, and I can see those interactions just to know that, that we played a part in that is really, really special. And the guests being proud to share it and saying, Hey, yeah. look, look, I, I shared my story. This is, you know, um, this is something I talked about. And, uh, again, we are very grateful for everybody who has shared their story on our show. So, well, again, it's not an insignificant amount of first times. Like this is my first time sharing in this way, or maybe not first time sharing that way, but the first time sharing in a public facing manner. Yeah. Where that conversation isn't just happening, you know, behind closed doors or just one on one conversations, small groups, whatever it might be. And so, yeah, I mean, one, like the fact that <laughs> I remember when I first started talking about the show being like, oh, yeah, we've been doing this for like six months now or I've been doing this yeah. for like you know, <laughs> four, 40 episodes. Like, OK, that sounds pretty good to tell people like, oh, we just released our 127th, 128th episode. Like the people are like shocked. Well, they're yeah. like, they're like, because I start talking, I'm like, oh yeah, I do a podcast. I'm like, oh, we just released this number episode, and they're like now it's in the hundreds. Like people yeah. are like, holy shit, that's a lot. They were like, oh, you mean you didn't just stop baking bread? Didn't pay much <laughs> like the rest of us? Like you, you kept doing this? <laughs> yeah, like just kept going, and yeah, to the point of like guests coming back and thinking about just where we started from, and how we were like literally fumbling with the microphones essentially as the metaphor <laughs> just trying to figure out how to have this conversation and to think that so many people have felt safe enough to come in and then share their story and share it where you know those people in their lives might hear it and then they might comment publicly or even better hopefully talk about talk to them about it offline and then they're like yes like this person who messaged me on linkedin like oh i somebody came up to me and was like oh i never realized you know all of these things thank you for sharing or whatever it might be you know, to help somebody to feel more secure and validated in their story is super amazing. Um, Nathan, I wanted to ask you, you talk about, you know, like I and me as well, taking a lot of pride in being able to talk about the show now with people from our past, not our past lives, but people we've known for a long time who Mm -hmm. are maybe like seeing this side of us for the very first time. Do those conversations go deeper beyond just, oh, this is what the show is and this is what I've been doing? And if they, and I see you nodding yes, if you don't mind sharing, you know, how do the, like, where do those conversations, where have they gone for you? Um, if you don't mind sharing some examples. Sure. Uh, well, for example, just uh, recently when I was in Hawaii, um, I, I got to see um, a lot of my wife's family. And uh, so it's it's essentially, you know, her aunts and uh, uncles and stuff. So it's, it's not my immediate family. And I feel 
you know, when I talk about the show to to people, it's, you know, it, I think it is surface level stuff most of the time um, because it's either somebody who you don't have a whole lot of time to just go deep or, you know, they just know the basics of, of the show. But, um, you know, for my, my wife's family, they've known me now for 13 years. And so, you know, when we had have these discussions they know i'm adopted they know i've been doing this podcast but they don't know all the details and so i, I explain mm. a little bit more i tell them about the emails that we've gotten i tell them about how just even informing them a little bit about adoption and what i've learned about adoption and that it's not the the you know the um the the ex explanation that i expected it or thought it was for so many years that there's so much more deeper um um behind the scenes there's so much more trauma there's so much many more stories out there um you know unlike mine that uh, that still need to be heard and understood and, and uh and so i explained that so i go a little bit deeper in that realm so because they know my story right um, so uh, you know and, and then they see that what i'm doing is good in a way and it's not just you know I mean, it's far more important in my mind than than the wedding photography that I did for 13 years now. Um, yeah, and uh, and and they just I, I can see in their their eyes that they they understand and they see the way I talk about it, and it brings me again joy knowing that I'm explaining this to them, and they're going, "Yes, wow, that's so great that I'm you know so proud of what you're doing." Yeah, you know, and to hear that you know is 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 what uh, you know is. Uh, again fulfilling so is allison's family like mixed japanese chinese is that no she is mixed she is i mean so yeah her her dad's side is japanese and her mom's side is chinese okay so yeah. i don't think i've ever asked you this i don't think we've ever talked about this on the show but i'm wondering when you first like met allison and started dating then first met her family do you remember ever having conversations about adoption at that point and like you being adopted was that like and did then do you, if you did, do you also remember like what their conception of like being adopted meant from their standpoint? Because like they had to deal with obviously transracial or international adoption from their own countries for whatever reason, if they had any, you know, relation to it at all. And I've never thought about, you know, from that standpoint, that perspective, what their thoughts would be then leading into now you going through this journey, not only having met your biological family, but like, like talking and un about and unpacking this experience. Did you ever have those conversations pre any of this? Yes, but I don't remember how deep it got. It was probably sure. very, very basic level stuff as, as well. I mean, it definitely was not, um, you know, Oh, by the way, I mean, they didn't know I was looking or I actually at the time right. I wasn't looking for my biological family. And I mean, that only has been around for, for what, eight years now. And they were surprised when they heard that too, that it has sure. been more recent because that was the whole reason I was in Hawaii was to see them. And so they did ask me more questions, uh, especially when they met my my brother um, because he came over for a dinner. And so they got to meet him and things like that. And, you know, again, we're at, we're at the language barrier. So there wasn't much yeah, of a yeah, deep yeah. conversation okay. there. They didn't pry. They didn't, uh, you know, they didn't go too deep on, on anything other than just welcome and, you know, enjoy yeah. being I, here. Kind of thing. I guess maybe Wait, I asked. with who? Hmm? Like, so my brother's family came to dinner with my wife's oh aunts. okay between your wife i was like yeah did you have trouble talking to your in-laws <laughs> but yeah okay okay I gotcha. no but th so there wasn't any like i mean they didn't you know there wasn't any deep conversations or or yeah. uh questions yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, were probably shouldn't have been asked or anything like that it was all just very basic uh you know welcoming yeah i guess i asked only because last year i went to an event and met one of the leaders of a Chinese American organization here in Indianapolis. And when I told him I was adopted from Korea, he was like, Oh, like recognize And then he like apologized for that happening. And so I just think it's like, I, I don't know. I just had never asked and never even really honestly thought about, have they ever had like a different perspective or just an alternate perspective from what you had heard or had talked about, you know, prior to going on any of this journey. And if that had changed, you know, because of mm -hmm. what you've learned and what you, well, the conversations that you're having now. So I appreciate you sharing. I don't know. I just, that popped in yeah, my head. I think it's we interesting too, but I wonder if it's not just like kind of the relationship between China and adoption because of like oh, the one child sure, policy sure, sure. versus mm -hmm. like Japan. I don't know that Japan has shipped out babies quite like I have no China idea. or Korea have. So, yeah. Yeah. So I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. We can pick it up another time. 
when we <laughs> learn more about the geopolitics of Japan and China. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, what I mean, you, Patrick? what about you, me? What you didn't, you didn't explain a little more about what, uh, other than, you know, what brings you joy a little bit. You said, about Oh, the, the, I mean, I think a lot of things are bringing me joy right now. Um, speaking. being able to, Speaking, yeah, speaking. just speaking. Doing your well, thing. I mean, knowing that me sharing my story and going out and doing some of this stuff is actually leaving an impact on that one person, you know, I think it's really hard for me personally when I'm up and like doing a presentation or having a conversation to really like feel what's going on in the audience. I feel like I asked that question a lot. I'm like, was that good? Like, was that good? Like, I couldn't really tell like were people engaged. Like I'm always asking that uh, to the people I work with after these events. And they're probably like, yeah, it was fine. Like stop worrying about it. But it's just like, I don't know. It's just like, I'm still maybe feeling the, the dealing with imposter syndrome in that way of like when I'm working through that to, like know that it matters. And then just so like to get affirmations out of that and see like for that one person, like it did make a big difference or made a difference, maybe not a big difference, but it did have an impact is really good or really cool. And something that I'm finding joy in. Um, but kind of like you, Nathan, the biggest thing that gives me joy and, or, and UKJ is like seeing, having been able and had the privilege to go to some of these bigger events, but really seeing community come together and, do fun, incredible stuff that's uplifting and supportive of each other. I just went to the Indie Asian Fest here in Indianapolis the other day. And like, it was really awesome to just see everybody. It was at the Historical Society the first time that it was there, I think, and which was cool. But it was really cool to just see all of these different cultures that make up Asian America here in Indiana together and like intermingling and, and and having conversations and, and really just like celebrating each other when things were going on. And I don't know, it just made me really happy because we've been talking about it a little bit, but it's just like going to New York, going out West and seeing where everybody already is and feeling like we're missing that here in Indiana. And then coming back and going to that event and be like, Oh no, it's here. Like, oh, this organization has been here since 78. This one's been here since 94. You know, like it exists here. Like that gives me, that makes me really happy. And it's like, okay, how do we, and like really reinvigorated me or just motivated me more even to like find those bridges that are just covered up right now and figure out how do we branch all of us together and do more of these things? Like who's putting events on and like, why are we all not attending these events? Like when the, when they're going on, like, why are we only like, not catering, but why does it feel like everything's only so set for Koreans or for the Japanese community that's here for the Burmese community here? Like, why aren't we all just going and flooding these events and celebrating those things? And so like, that's what's giving me joy right now. It's the community and the, and the thought of what's possible uh, in the community still. I think that's, what's giving me a lot of hope because shit is really scary and terrible right now <laughs> in a lot of places. In Indiana included. And it's like, how do we, you know, I, I it's hard to see the, the joy and stuff sometimes. Yeah. Um, or it's really hard to like acknowledge the joy that's happening when you sit in a more privileged position than people, than communities that are suffering. Like I'm specifically here talking about, well, always the black community, but also specifically the trans and queer community here in Indiana and then across the nation. Like, it's just not, you know, it's hard to be like, yes, I'm happy about these things happening. But I'm also seeing our Asian American communities, specifically just in the past couple of weeks, um, working, I feel like, to, 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 to support the trans and queer communities more so than I feel like I've ever seen before in my experience. So that's what's giving me joy. Community and community creating and, and building up support for other communities that really need it right now. Well, you, you definitely should feel joy because, um, you know, I'm, yeah, you should, you should, oh, you okay. know, I mean, feel joy. Okay. Out of the three of I us, will make you. <laughs> out of the three of us, you, I mean, to be invited to these Lovely. events is amazing. The work that you have done, quitting your job and pursuing this <laughs> even is, um, is amazing. And, uh, I mean, you should feel joy each time somebody asks you to an event, um, to speak or even to just attend, honestly. Um, I mean, it was like, I always felt 
a little bit of joy just you know getting an inquiry for a wedding back in the day you know and oh, sure, like, sure, oh, they sure. want my service that was always you know oh that's nice but for you to actually be invited to a much minimal more minimal kind of you know niche kind of thing where it's you're talking about you know the aapi community you're talking from your own experience you're you're being invited to these things because of what you've already done or what you've already said. And I think that is definitely something to be proud of and, you know, for, for everything that you have accomplished this, this year. So I appreciate it. No, nah, no, nah, it's the wrong one. <laughs> hey, was that to be like applause? it was going to be this one. Ah, there we go. Yes. <laughs> and then I, I miscounted the rows. I was going to lean over and just push it on my, my keyboard like a real musician. I think you got a little remix going on. I like that. It. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I appreciate those words. And it's weird to think about that, being able to do like a thing with the Colts, thinking about how far away three years ago was. Mm-hmm. And like when we started this podcast and how I was talking about my story again, I feel like we've rehashed this a lot when our solo episodes, <laughs> like what we used to do, but it is like to think about it's wild, just how far like articulation has come, how far like the language and not only that, but the internalization of the ideas and like the things that I've been learning about being adoptee, what it means to be adopted, to be a product of that system. Um, and then to also like know and accept myself and like where I want to go and have a vision for that. And not be going from a place of fear, but from a place of like joy and a, a place of hope, like, oh, yeah. and, and motivation, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I feel like I did. I clocked this during the event when I was telling my the, uh, the part where I was talking about my own story. I was like, man, I feel like I'm articulating this really good. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, and I thought about and I but I thought about like. I would hate to go back and listen to uh, that first episode and just hear like how I was talking about this or go back and listen to Dear Asian Americans episode and be mm-hmm. like, ugh, like oh, kind of cringy. Yeah. But also, again, like uh, the testament of the show and 130 plus episodes is to like we can chart our growth. And like, I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily have an on the record charting of that. And so that's something else that gives me joy and something that I am really grateful for, you know, and when we think about gratitude. I am grateful to have that record, even though like the first half of it really makes me go and (laughs) not want to listen to it. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I think that's big too. Cause, uh, Oh, nope. Never mind. I don't think that's big. I thought I, I like, I definitely had a thing that I was going to like go (laughs) off of about that. And, uh, and I just lost it. Frick. That's all right. Oh, I was no, going to say, like, pull it a Patrick. <laughs> pull it a that Patrick. does happen to me. That does happen uh, to me. So, so the growth is, is for sure. I mean, I think anyone who has been with us for this, this, uh, this long haul, uh, you know, I have had a couple people talk to me specifically about it and say that they've seen our growth and they've seen the change. So hopefully if anyone's listening to this and you go back and start at the beginning or something that, uh, oh um, that you will agree, uh, and not just have started at the very beginning and then said, Oh, I'm out. <laughs> so, I don't think yeah. I said this too. And this kind of has nothing to do with this, but also does kind of, uh, I met Holly McGinnis in New York. Um, mm-hmm. cause she was doing the adoptee event with also known as, and she said what J Ron and joy, have both said to us, previous guests on the show, J. Ron Kim and Joy Lieberthal wrote that we three male adoptees doing this is really important for the community to have like this again, <laughs> this catalog. But thinking about it now, I did I literally just thought about this, but like that I guess is another reason it's important that all of this is recorded, then we have all of these episodes to listen to. Because like I don't think about it that way ever. Like that it's important for us three straight cis male dudes to be having these kinds of conversations but i mean we've had enough people tell us that it is Mm -hmm. and you know i i don't know i take a measure of pride in that as well thinking that Um, we're hopefully providing something that you know brings value to the conversation you know outside of just us telling our stories which is also very valuable and hopefully it is relatable yeah i I would say it's probably just our male presenting privilege to not have to think about being That's male. That's very true. <laughs> You're right. Exactly. It's a hundred percent privilege there right that. there. Uh, You're very, I, very I right. I think it is You're very right. also like, we're so new to this community and we like our focus is specifically so narrow um, yeah. to our experiences. And like, cause we don't want to speak out of turn um, that I think having others in the community who take a more broad view and approach 
like to have that information is encouraging. Yep. It makes me think about like after, uh, after the Allen shooting, I reached out to all the local, just Asian adoptees who I knew, mm-hmm. um, and, and who um, lived here. Uh, and it, I realized then I had started an Instagram chat with like eight women. <laughs> and I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, I guess it's just me. And then everyone yeah. was like, let's go like, let's hang out. Let's have dinner. I was like, yeah. All right. Because <laughs> like I don't yeah. love that ratio. Just for me, I mean, it's not a big deal, but you know, it, it sure. is that. I, I think it's interesting. Um, I don't. I still don't remember what I was going to say to your thing, Patrick. So I'm sorry, but um, I know there are a couple of things. I think part of it is um, like you getting used to being a speaker. A lot of what sure. I hear you saying reminds me of like when I first started as a, a musician, where I was like, I would play music that like. I know I was technically playing. I have no idea if it was good, but I was so focused on like the craft of like yeah, getting yeah, into yeah. a band and doing all that, you know, that I was like, I don't know, is it good? You know, and people were like, yeah, I didn't think anything of it. And like, great. Right. All I wanted was to blend in. But then right. like later in my career was able to have those moments of like, no, this is good. Or like those moments of joy too. Where I'm like, oh, what I'm doing right now, I'm like really feeling it for me, not just right. for like the people, you know, whatever. So I think that, your ability to read the crowd will grow with time. Um, but I think that's one of those things that like, it makes it hard for me because like a podcast is so intimate by nature. Like more often than not, it's just the three of us and then one other person <laughs> going out to a lot of ears over time, yeah, but yeah, a yeah. lot of ears, you know? And then like the the live show of it. And I've said this, I'm like, oh yeah, this, this is our audience. This is our people, people who are listening to us in real time, which I think is interesting. Um, but yeah, I I wonder this um just to like shift a little bit. Um I what do you think I I thought about this question when we were uh talking to Annika. What do you think is the importance of identifying as an adoptee? I think as as I listened to her mm. tell her story, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is uh like she was able to verbalize some things." about like her intersectional identities that were like really compelling and, and and lovely. And I think like, obviously it's important to identify as an adoptee because like we wouldn't have the show if, if it weren't, but I right. wonder in, in your words, why it's important to you to identify as an adoptee and how often in what circumstances you do that. Yes. Are you asking me specifically? Uh, I mean, it's or a question for both of you and you can go first. Okay. Well, I will go first. Um, so I think it's, I do think it's really important to identify as an adoptee because I think I mentioned this on that episode when we were talking about this, um, but adoptee, like adoptee as an identity is not seen as being an identity by anybody else, but the people who are adopted. And then those very few fringe allies from all of our communities that see us and validate our experiences. Shout out to the fringe allies. Shout out to the fringe allies. Um, And I think, honestly, I think it's really as simple as that for me specifically, because in my work and when I do speaking and telling my story and whatnot, what I hope to do for the community is to make it to where people understand, oh, that is an identity. Something that at our core level affects our day-to-day lives whether we're uh, just at home, whether we're at school, whether we're at work, like that is something that is affecting us at a very foundational level. And I can say that because I can literally live it. And so right now, adoption is only seen as something by the wider general public as something that happens to someone. You know, it's again, it goes to like, oh, you're making a family, you save this child, like, and that's it. Like, that's where the story ends from adoption. We don't talk about the identity aspect of it and what that means. You know, we don't talk about like cultural loss or things like that. Anything that forms that initial identity in the first place, that all goes out the window because we've been adopted. Whether it's same race, whether it's transracial, domestic, intercountry, whatever it might be. Like all of that goes out of the way because it's like, okay, this family is now completed. You know, and the story literally ends for most people right there where that happens. And so... The only people who would ever really know about an adoptee being an identity are people who are in the community or have literally done like that super hyper-focused work like an Alina Kim, you know, who is not 
an adoptee, but who is basically embedded herself within the community to understand that experience and bring that to the forefront from a scholastic perspective, not even from like a societal narrative shift, narrative shift perspective, but simply from like, oh, we don't have any data on this. Like we, mm. we should probably have some data on that, <laughs> you know, like, oh, this is a group of people like this encompasses like hundreds of thousands of people. We should probably know about that experience. And that's the unfortunate thing, too, is like and why I think it's important to identify specifically as adoptee is, and use that as like this is one of my identities that I inhabit is because from a scholastic standpoint, there also isn't a ton of literature out there that we can pull from from a data perspective to then use to back up those arguments. So we have to do the work of not only the part of our community who works in, in scholarship and, and does the data research and collection and all of that, and then disseminates that for people to understand, but also the people who do what we do, that narrative focus, that, that narrative change work to also being loud from that standpoint and really leaning into lived experience. Like we'll capture oral narrative and we'll capture lived experience in the scholarship, but also on the other end, like media and what we can do with media and how we can tell stories has evolved so much so rapidly that we can also do the work of shifting narratives from a societal perspective over here that's not necessarily rooted in data, but specifically rooted in a person's lived experience. And so by sharing that lived experience, like we're sharing the identity of an adoptee and hoping to normalize that as something that is identified as like being an identity. And so I hope that all made sense. But like that's I feel like I've been trying to talk about this a lot more lately because that's the thing. Like, we're just not seen as like, that's not something that makes up part of our humanity. It's just, you know, oh, you were adopted. Like not you were, oh, you're an adoptee. It's like, oh, you were adopted. So hmm. reframing that thinking. And that's a great answer. Everything that you said, I <clears throat> completely agree with. Um, mine will be a much shorter answer. Uh, <laughs> it will. I personally love uh, now identifying as an adoptee and talking to people about it. Do you really? Just, yeah, just in case somebody else is also an adoptee or has mm. some sort of um, that too. Uh, connection or something where it just, you know, like you said, it normalizes it. And then if somebody feels alone or somebody feels that it's not something they can't relate to anything and then they find somebody else that's adopted, maybe a slim chance that maybe they find a community that they never knew they 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 needed or wanted or you know something like that and so i'm very happy to now just throw it out there you know a lot of opportunity I'll, you know i wear my my john g yeah, show like, shirts all the time because, you know i mean Do even you guys joke about getting like a, a shirt that says something about like you know adopted or something like that right um and just to start that conversation because um you never know i mean i have met people just you know on the streets that you know, random conversations have come to to adoption and um and that and then you know a connection so uh there's a lot of people who still don't have an adoptee uh, community or anybody that they even know that's an everybody also deserves adopted. to have an adoptee friend <laughs> yeah i i think so i really do think so so at least i believe that now so um yeah. i do want to add that all of my really long answer was really hyper focused from my perspective as to why I identify as an adoptee. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate what you said, Nathan. I do think that if you don't want to identify, like you said, you love identifying as that. And oh, Casey yeah, was like, me. really? Yeah. And like, at first I thought you were joking, but I could tell that your response was genuine. And because I do think there are people who are like, I don't want that yeah. to define me. You know, yeah, I yeah. don't want that to be a specific identity that I associate with, you know, which is totally fine too. And yeah, that's a good clarification. I want, yeah, I yeah. don't want anybody to think that I was saying, oh, you have to because we got to shift the narrative. Like, if mm -hmm. you don't want to, totally okay. I'm doing it hopefully in, you know, helping others to uh, to relate um, if they want to. But if they don't, you that's know. What, yeah, that's what you yeah. said. You know, like, yeah. it's like you like to do it because just in case somebody doesn't have that, you know, maybe that's their in. So yeah. I appreciate that too. What about you, KJ? Yeah, I think I'm more choosy about it. Uh, cause sometimes I just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> um, and other times it is really intentional and, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Again, going back to Alan, like, I was like, man, I gotta, like the vigil was like way further South than where the actual event happened. And so it was like weird. Like, I know I, like, I feel it because like Dallas is large. And so it's like, you know, kind of 
kind of like LA, except they are like separate cities, you know, but it's yeah. just like one of those things where it's like, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, the point is I went there being like excited to be an adoptee, excited to be Asian American, specifically wearing the intersection. And then when I got there, some people I was talking to, like asked me some questions, uh, specifically like reporters and things. And I was like, oh yeah. And then they would ask me questions of like, this isn't where I expected this to go. And I have more to learn about being an Asian American in Dallas uh, mm. and like re-engaging in that. So yeah, it was just, it was just interesting. And and I, I, I'm grateful for both of you for your answers because I think it's, it's important. And um, I don't have a good answer for myself beyond, I think just like adding, adding that color. Uh, sometimes it's adding like, like you said, Patrick, like wanting to um, exist and to amplify the existence of that identity. Uh, sometimes it's like you, Nathan, where I'm like, I don't know who is listening, but I think it's important that somebody hears that I'm an adopted person. Um, and then other times I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, it was just it was just interesting, and and I I just so appreciated like I there was something in um, how Annika talked about all of her identities and and being adopted and her like apocalypse moment and what she did after that, that I was like, I wonder if we're able to explicitly articulate that, you know, uh, in a way that, uh, that was interesting. And, um, and it's, I, I continue to wrestle with like some things that maybe I took for granted early in the show, uh, mm. that I'm still kind of working through that watching Queer Eye has been uh, (laughs) kind of helpful for because there have been like a lot of things uh, like in some one episode, I don't know, whatever. uh, There was just like, hey, you should read some affirmations. And like as the hero of the episode read those affirmations in the mirror, I was like, oh yeah, I don't think I'm good at affirming myself. I think I, I think, well, and I, I don't remember who it was before this or after this, but like I started writing a song that's just like generally titled, like, I think I hate myself. Or something like that, because like I just think I have more unpacking and more unlearning to do internally, you know. Um, and so <clears throat> part of it was like, yeah, I'm proud of being an adoptee, and part of it was like, well, do I do I want to use that label all the time, you know? Like, and same right. same thing about like I don't understand like how I think about my own masculinity or my own like gender per se. So I'm like is it, do I feel one way and I just like hate myself a lot? Or do I like, is it like, would a different label fit me better? Have I put myself too much in a box to be easily understood? You know what I mean? Like, so I think there's just a lot of like, I've got a lot of identity things. And I thought that 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 question was interesting and it was really good having her on uh, to be able to think through those things. It stirred up a lot in me, I guess is what I'm saying. It's all good. Great. Those are the best conversations where things get stirred up. A whole, a whole other episode. Uh, we could do a whole that, episode on that for sure. Yeah, because oh, I yeah. got things to um, say. Well, yeah, we still have <laughs> yeah. to get all to my to my sad boy stuff, which is just mm. my baseline. Sad boy baseline, feels. sad boy stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay. To be to continue. To yeah. T- uh, <laughs> TBC. Nathan said, TBD. "I don't want to eat. I don't want to do some sad boy stuff TBD. today." Well, um, uh, well, I think it's time to stir some other things up, namely. Let's, Stir that Our up. food portion. Mm. Let's stir the food portion up. What do you say, Nathan? Shake it up. All right, we're going to shake it up real quick. <laughs> Welcome back to the John Chi Show. This is... The food portion where we eat or drink, and today we liar. are drinking. That's why I said shake it portion. up at it's the end drink. of the last one. It's a drink portion. Let's shake it up. Okay, it is. It is a drinking <laughs> portion, um, and it is not expired. Um, it is a fruit black tea, and all it says on the front is RT. So, by Jardin. Uri. Jardin. Jardin. No, know. it actually doesn't say Uri, which I think oh, is really? really funny. Yeah, so uh, hmm. the flavor says orange chamong black tea. Uh, so orange something. I say uh, grapefruit. grapefruit. It maybe. looks like grapefruit, but uh, but then on the on the side here, uh, next to the leaves, it says awa tea, which I think is funny. Oh, it's sending so, out our. <laughs> yeah, awa tea. Our tea. 
Oh, well, it, I don't know. It looks good. It's uh, pretty simple. It's got 10 calories for the entire bottle. <laughs> it's 10 more calories than I'm willing to have right now. Um, not much sugar. So this is going to be, uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty straightforward. I don't know. I like the bottle. So smells well, good. Yeah. All right. It does smell fruity. Not bad. Reminds me of like a Lipton. Yeah. Like iced tea. I mean, it still has a sweetness to it. Does it have at least an artificial? Yeah, it does have a sweetness. It does. It also finishes kind of like a Lipton. I yeah. feel like there's yeah. like a sucralose. Like, sucralose. It does taste like black tea to me. I'm not like yeah. a big tea person. This doesn't taste bad though. I would drink one. Are you of a these. little tea person? <laughs> a small tea um, person? A mini tea person? Mm, I like teas. Are you a Mr. But tea I also like person? Coffee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Iced tea. <laughs> Pity the fool. Ah, pity the oh, fool. That's <laughs> terrible. Cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I love grapefruit teas. So, is it grapefruit flavored? It I has can't grapefruit tell. in it. In the grapefruit back, and orange. I can actually taste both of them. There's more orange than grapefruit, um, but it has both. You know and how we know that? Because there's a whole orange on here. But only slices slice of grapefruit. Of grapefruit. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know that there's more horse. <laughs> so accurate. But uh, very representative yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't have much to say about it. I'm surprised that, I mean, how smooth, not too sugary, but still has the flavor of tea in it. Wait a minute. Why does it say zero kilocalories and also 10 calories? I feel freaking lied to. Because a kilo, because a kilo is less. No, a kilocalorie and calories as we understand them are, as far as I understand it, the same. Mm. Like the way that we understand calories is actually like a scientific kilocalorie. So the fact that the front of this bottle says zero kilocalories, but then in American English, it like American health metric system, whatever the frick, it says 10 calories. It's a maybe, dirty lie. Maybe America is lying to us. Wouldn't be the first time. Wouldn't be the first time I was waiting for someone to say that. Ten more ten more <laughs> calories than we think it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, the bottle, the non-English part does say zero at the top there, so. Um, also on the front. And on the front in big letters, yeah. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's what just. What the heck, uh, man? It's a different, different system. Uh, mm. Side note, hmm. something that I really appreciate is that the plastic <laughs> wrapper for the bottle is perforated. Oh, yeah. So you can take it off before you recycle. Yeah. Because yeah. one of the things that I hate is uh, iced coffee things that like my wife buys. Like I have to like take a knife to those things to get that wrapper off so mm. I can recycle a bottle. It's so annoying. Mm. But this perforation, fantastic. Way to save the earth, Korea. Yeah. Good, Good job, job Jarden. Korea. Jarden. Got a little tiger. Looks like um, Looks like a Harry Potter logo. Well, let's get jump into ratings. Let's not uh, let's not sugarcoat this. <laughs> With zero calories, Nathan, what are you rating this out of five grapefruits? Out of five grapefruits, uh, I'm just gonna go right down the middle ish area, a little bit above. Let's give it a three. I'll give it a three. <laughs> right down the middle, and then he was questioning his math. <laughs> No, because then I was questioning my, I was like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's a tea. It's nothing I would rush out to buy, but I like that. It, I think it tastes good. It doesn't have calories or it has anywhere between zero and 10 calories. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean, I would drink it again. I like it. I'm going to give it a right down the middle, but a little bit above as well. <laughs> so I'm going to go three. <laughs> Uh, uh, for all the exact same reasons. I'm not really a tea person, but this is all right. You and Ted Lasso. Um, you know what? Now that I'm doing the macro math, looking at the nutrition label, it actually has 12 calories. Everyone's lying to us. How dare you, Korea? Well, I mean, they How can't like, put the... an approximation sign on it. Like, it's approximately It's not approximated. It's, it's three, three carbs, which is Maybe they're calories. rounding down. <laughs> No. <laughs> to zero? <laughs> what system are you using? I want to uh, use that system. That yeah, sounds like the American below 50 one. Is zero. Exactly. Yeah, sounds like enough. the American one. You're like, no, no, no. This how that this video game is uh, fifty dollars. So it's zero. Zero dollars. 
I mean, what's the difference between zero and 10 calories, really? You think your dinner is $50? It's zero dollars because rounding. (laughs) Because Um, rounding. I'm going to give it a zero because rounding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to give it a a 2.75. I think it's entirely fine and also a little bit above that. But also, (laughs) the, uh, the... misdirection with the calories really makes me angry, but I think it finishes well. It does taste a little Lipton-y, but it, fin- it feels more natural than that. Like if it's more tea than like pure artificial sugar. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's fine. 2.75. It's a good flavor. If you want that, I'm just not really into it. And the calories make me angry. I'm just yeah. not that into it. You're, <laughs> Well, way to be, you know, stick to your guns on on the calorie thing. Way to stick to your gums. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. Zero to ten. Go eat some celery. <laughs> What's that happening right now? Like zero what? calories. It's negative I don't calories. Know. We need to. Celery is negative. Now we're talking you, about celery. You lose what more is calories point? by chewing it. I, sorry, that's just a thing that always fascinated me. <laughs> I don't know how accurate that is. A while. I bet if you ate a whole stock of wholly celery, accurate. It's not whole. Then you would no, eat more we're calories. We're not dietitians. Than we're not even honestly. What are we doing here, guys? We need to wrap this up. <laughs> wrap it up. Uh, wrap it up. Where can people up. find us up? Uh, on the we're socials at at John Chi Show on all the socials. We're what about email? John Chi Show at gmail dot com. <laughs> what about um, phone? We're at nine seven two. Oh gosh. 972-677-8867. Wait, is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, do gosh, we have a, all right. Do we have a website? Let me say that again without stumbling over it. 972-677-8867. Our website is johnchyshow.com. You can also hang out with Nathan on Facebook. You can hang out with me <laughs> on our subreddit. You can, or you can, no, that's all socials. Uh, Yeah. That's all. Leave us a rating or review on. That's going to be the next one the other podcast platforms that allow that if you don't mind that would be really helpful as we said at the top of the show that social interaction those reviews and things really help us honestly just like keep going not that i mean there's probably a world where we're feeling down on ourselves and we could use some affirmation but mostly just like be social man meet some people just be some randos meet some randos because of this rando podcast um you can find (laughs) this rando at kj relke wherever he wants to be found on the internet you can find me on instagram and no walk and you can find this rando at Patrick and the world on the stuff. That's two and randos and Nathan. And that's two randos and me. Rand- <laughs> sounds like a band. <laughs> New band name. I called it two randos <laughs> and Nathan. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, until next week when we do our debut album for two randos and Nathan, uh, John Chi. start my own outro <laughs> battling out. of sound <laughs>